Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the future, the distant future, of planet Earth. And more specifically, the transformation of the continental crust as the continents move around the planet and eventually transform our planet into something very different from what it is today. Something that will not just change the visual appearance of the planet, but will also dramatically affect the climate on the surface as well. And today we'll talk about one such investigation that managed to simulate what Earth might look like in the next 200 to 300 million years in the future, and how all of this will most likely change the climate as well. And all of this is of course based on the idea of plate tectonics, something that a lot of us have probably learned earlier in school, and also something that you can learn more about by watching this NASA video that I posted in the description below. You can also check out this beautiful website created by Ian Webster that shows you the simulation of what Earth may have looked like throughout the period of about 800 million years in the past, and also look at some of the most important moments in the history of planet Earth as the plate tectonics changed the shape of our planet. But the most important part to all of this is that once in a while Earth seems to form these supercontinents, with the most uh, famous one probably being the Pangaea supercontinent that existed about 240 million years ago. This is essentially when all of the continents sort of merged into one large supercontinent, with the rest of the planet forming an extremely large ocean. Now we're not entirely sure why this happens and also why this is something that happens quite a lot, but Usually this also leads to a breakup of the supercontinent into smaller continents, which eventually forms something that looks similar to Earth today. And by studying the geology of our planet, we've discovered that this whole supercontinent thing happened a few times. Prior to Pangaea, there was another supercontinent known as Panotia roughly around 600 million years ago. This one was actually relatively short-lived, and it was actually created from a larger and much longer living supercontinent, known as Rodinia, that existed for several hundred million years and most likely began forming about 1 billion years ago. But interestingly, prior to this, about 1.5 billion years ago, there was another supercontinent that we refer to as Nuna or Columbia. So there's a kind of a cyclical nature to them and they do seem to happen every few hundred million years. And with the last one being about 200 million years ago, the next one will probably happen in approximately 200 million years from now. Here's a general time frame of each of these supercontinents as they appeared on the surface of our planet. Now, the actual reasons for this are not entirely clearly understood just yet, but most scientists believe that it has something to do with the repetitive patterns due to the convection inside our planet. Today we understand that there's a lot of this kind of a circular motion going on inside our planet, known as convection, that's essentially due to the heat distribution inside the planet. As the mantle here rises, usually the continents start drifting apart, and as the mantle starts descending, that's when the continents start moving closer together. But once in a while, as the continental crust starts to accumulate and starts to sink in one region of the planet, it starts creating a lot of these plumes or super plumes as they're known, that essentially push the continents away from other regions on the planet and move them closer and closer to that one region where all of the continents are already formed. And this happens once in a while, this is a very cyclical process, but it's obviously not a permanent process because these continents do eventually break up. But there's one important feature of supercontinents or continents in general that I haven't really mentioned yet. It's in regards to the transfer of heat around the planet due to various motions of, well, really the oceanic currents that are actually dependent on the shape of the continents and the distribution of land on the planet. Today the currents are extremely, extremely complex and actually do depend on certain structure of certain continents. For example, we know that the warm oceanic current from the equator can easily carry all of this heat all the way to the north, even to regions like Greenland and Iceland. And a lot of this heat transfer is essentially why certain regions on the planet are a lot warmer than they should be. And so having a very specific structure to the continents and also having very specific regulation of the current on the planet is what actually allows planet Earth to maintain certain climatic conditions on the surface. If, however, let's say a new continent is formed, or an old continent forms some sort of a structure that disrupts this current, it can actually lead to dramatic climatic changes as it most likely has in the past. But imagine now that all of these continents that we have today suddenly combine into one single continent. The dramatic transformation of the current activity on the surface would transform the climate of our planet to the point of either making the planet extremely hot 
or making it extremely cold. And so trying to simulate what the planet might look like in the next few hundreds of millions of years, and also trying to imagine where all of these different continents are going to be located in the future, is actually a pretty interesting hypothetical scenario that can help us understand what the climate of the planet might be in the next 200 to 300 million years, especially when the next supercontinent forms on the surface. And so not so long ago, several scientific teams presenting at the AGU, the American Geophysical Union, were actually discussing their recent simulations of what Earth might look like and how Earth might transform climatically as the new supercontinent forms. And all of this was actually based on the incredible NASA simulation that you can find in the description below. The simple version of which is right here. This is known as Roki or Roke 3D. The simple version here allows you to briefly simulate some of the more interesting versions of the planet. Like for example, here's what Earth climatic conditions looked like in the pre-industrial era. And here's what all of this would look like if suddenly there was about four times more CO2 in the air. This simulation is actually extremely accurate at being able to simulate potential climatic conditions depending on the total solar illumination, the um, actual components on the surface, and of course also the idea behind how fast the planet spins, for example, or the continents on the surface. Here's for example what the surface of nearby Proxima b might look like, assuming that it has Earth-like atmosphere. And notice how here the heat is unequally distributed, and that's because the planet here is actually tidally locked to its star, with one side always facing the hot side, with the hottest temperature being about 3 degrees Celsius, and the colder side on the dark side of the planet being about minus 63 degrees Celsius. And so using Rogue 3D, the scientists um, presenting at AGU talked about several scenarios using several simulations and the potential implications of what Earth might look like in the future. And overall, it seems that there were two major possible scenarios that played out depending on where the continents flow and which direction they go. In the first scenario, it seems that the continents might once again form some sort of a central body in this case, the scientists refer to it as Orica, which might look slightly different depending on where the continents go. And in the second scenario, the continents might form something large on the north side of the planet near the North Pole, with Antarctica remaining as its own separate entity. In this case, the scientists refer to this continent as Amatia. All of this would happen anywhere from 200 to about 250 million years in the future and would also most likely last for at least a couple of hundred million years. And in order to calculate relatively accurate climatic conditions on this new Earth in the future, the scientists also had to consider the fact that Earth is going to spin a little bit slower, mostly because of the effects from the Moon, but the Sun at the same time will produce slightly more heat as well. And what's really unusual is that if the Earth ends up being a kind of a two-continent system with one being in the north and one being Antarctica in the south, this will actually leave really large regions of water in the equator completely empty of any continental influence. And because of this, the heat transport will become extremely difficult. In these particular simulations, the so-called Amatia ended up being an ice world. It's basically an idea of so-called uh, snowball Earth. The Earth became extremely cold, extremely quick, and eventually resulted in conditions where Earth eventually became a snowball Earth, and uh, most of the life would probably have trouble surviving here. We know that this happened a few times in the past, and we also know that um, in the last few million years, especially in the existence of complex life on the planet, nothing similar ever happened before. And so, in some sense, we don't really know if the complex multicellular life is going to have trouble surviving during these times, especially if the Earth indeed becomes an extremely cold place. And with a single day being about 24 and a half hours instead of being just 24 hours, even that extra sunlight is not really going to help much because, um, for the most part, once the ice starts forming on the surface, it's going to create a lot of reflection, a lot of albedo effect. And this albedo effect will actually result in Earth cooling down even more. And so, in that sense, if for some reason Earth ends up having these two large continents, one in the north and one in the south, it might lead to a new, really, really cold period of the planet that will last for at least 100 million years. Although in their simulations they discovered that if there were less mountains in that particular continent known as Amatia, it would still allow for some surface to be not covered in snow and also allow for better heat transport, thus allowing the planet to be a little bit warmer. 
But nevertheless, the warmest region of Earth, the equator, would not really transfer as much heat, mostly because almost no continents will allow for this very effective current transfer that we currently have on the planet because of all of the continents across the planet. However, in the other simulations, the supercontinent was right in the middle of the equator. And that of course suggests that the planet might be a lot warmer than today, and thus be an extremely different world, with possibly even this huge tropical area and possibly even some deserts in the middle, all of which would be very different from what we have today, but also thus allowing the life to proliferate and to evolve much quicker, because we believe that in warmer climates and also with a lot more diversity of life in, for example, rainforest, the chance for evolution and the chance for proliferation is a lot higher. But which of these scenarios is going to play out and which of these continental configuration Earth is going to have is not a question we can answer right now. These are just predictions and possible suggestions to what Earth might become in the future, but for all we know, it might actually take a completely different route and become something else. However, we do think that at some point there is going to be another supercontinent, simply because they were cyclical so far and repeated every 300 to 400 million years. But I guess for now that's kind of all we can do and that's all we know about the future of Earth. I'm sure some other studies are going to come out in the next few months trying to clarify this or maybe even simulate this a little bit better. But for now we know that there's a chance Earth might become an ice world in the next 250 million years. And there's also a really high chance that Earth might become a very large tropical world. Which of these will occur we're not sure and only future will tell. Either way, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video, and we'll definitely explore the idea of what Earth might look like in the future in one of the videos in the future. Once I discover some other studies that focus on this in more detail, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.